Um, it's wonderful to come from one great Mile High City to another great Mile High City, and uh, we know about the snow removal uh, challenge, so um, clearly that's going to not be a, an issue here. This, this is a great place to be. For me, I'm thrilled to be in a room full of uh, aviation passionate uh, people, as, as I know you are and as I am. And, uh, and so I'm going to spend a little bit of time in my next few minutes with you talking about our industry. Um, and what the, what's happening to it, the change that's happening around us. It's happening in our lives, and it's certainly happening uh, to, to aviation. You know, our world depends upon a very robust air transportation system, um, from the airlines to general aviation, business aviation, and the military. Uh, what we do makes a difference every day in the world. Millions and millions of people are able to get where they go, uh, get their goods where they need to go because of what you do and we all do together. So as I talk about this change, and it's very appropriate that one of the themes for this convention is, is innovation. Uh, we're an industry that uh, is, is innovating in new ways, yet in one context we're also one of the most conservative industries around, right? So a lot of change is happening, but maybe in ways that we don't expect. So I'm going to share a little bit of that through, um, through the eyes of Jefferson um, and uh, what's happening in, in our company. We're 77 years old. We've been proud to serve the aviation industry for many, many decades. And so I was really pleased to see all the hands that went up who have used Jefferson charts. And I want to say thank you because you know, this dollar I just took out of my pocket, you put that dollar there and you put this dollar in pockets of 3,200 employees, Jefferson employees around the world. Uh, the challenge that we have is the value that we deliver to you needs to continue to move with the industry and with, with technology. So uh, my challenge is how do we make this um, something that you continue to do? Um, I also have a personal challenge of trying to keep this in my pocket, not at the casino here before I leave. <laughs> So let me talk about that a little bit. We serve a million pilots around the world with, with, with the information. And, and to do that, historically, it's been uh, delivered by paper, navigation charts and other kinds of information. So if you look at our previous year, last year, 2010, we printed one billion sheets of paper um, and delivered that to every country in the world. Imagine a stack of Jefferson charts, and remember, you know, we use that really thin paper, right? And if you stack those and put them next to the world's tallest building, the Burj Dubai building, which is 2,700 feet, it would take 88 stacks of charts at 2,700 feet to be a billion. I mean, that's a tremendous amount of paper, and still used in the cockpit, but you know, the world is going digital, right? So why still paper? So here's that challenge. Uh, take a look at um, uh, some airspace in, in the New York area. And this is the chart from 1962. And it's a little bit hard to see, but at the bottom there you'll see Idlewild. But this is what that airspace and the Jefferson chart looked like, as I said, in 1962. If you look to 1977, you can see, and again, it's a little bit hard probably to, in the back, but you see JFK. That's now JFK Airport. But look at that airspace in 1977. Here's what it looked like in 2002, and here's what it looks like today. Now, can you imagine trying to read that in a cockpit at night in a thunderstorm? And I like this example because it's an aviation example, but think about this in our lives. What's happening with the volume and the amount of information that's coming to us every day? And you know, some of our email boxes do look like this. And so here's what you said, so we need to move to a digital world. Uh, and that there are many, many challenges around making that happen. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. And so something that's kind of interesting, we look broadly at what's happening in the, in the world as a result of change. We've come out of the information age. And a lot of people probably don't realize that. It really ended around 2005. And so if you look at some of these technologies in the information age, look in your closet at home, you probably have a few of these. 
I mean, how many people have a drawer full of cell phones? Look at the speed, right? Look at the speed at which cell phones are changing. It's absolutely amazing. So what's happened is we've moved into the shift age. And the shift age is one, again, around 2005, that really is defined by intellectual property. So it's no longer that technology or that thing that you hold in your hand, it's information. What comes with that is a level of connectivity and connectiveness that's unparalleled in human history. There are seven and a half billion of us on the planet, four and a half million, 4.6 million, as you saw, have cell phones. There's more connectivity and connection to the internet by handheld mobile devices than there is by computers now. I mean, it's absolutely staggering. And so for our company, going from this billion sheets a year to moving into the cockpit has a lot of challenges. And one of them is having the systems in the, in the cockpit to display. But we began early um, in the early 2000s working on the electronic flight bag. And what you see is a class three electronic flight bag system in the in Boeing 777 in this display. Yet something happened last year, as we've made progress to, to implement these kind of systems, something happened last year that's changing all of our lives. And do you know what it was? IPad. iPad. Look at this. So this device, which, which by the way, you know, is, is the right format and the right size. So they introduced it on April 3rd. They sold, uh, as you can see, a million of them in 74 days. And then, of course, Apple came out and they introduced the uh, iPhone 4. Look at that number. 1.7 million units sold in three days. So the volume and the changes are, are substantial. So we start looking at this as, wait a minute, this is a way to personally connect and provide information um, and, and make it usable in, in the cockpit. So uh, at Oshkosh last year, Jeppesen introduced its first iPad application, mobile TC, so terminal charts. And in the six months since that introduction, we now have 45,000 of our customers who are using this as a principal device for getting updated navigation information and are beginning to use it in a cockpit. I mean, it's staggering in a, such a short period of time. We just announced last week in conjunction with the FAA and with executive jet management that the, the system and the device, the iPad is certified in certain aircraft um, with, this, with our application to be used in all phases of flights. So as long as it's strapped to your knee or mounted in the airplane. The pace of this change is coming and it's becoming rapid. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. Another interesting kind of um, uh, example that we've had as we move into this mobile computing world, we've created an application that does fatigue prediction. So one of the things that Jefferson does, we have a very extensive crew scheduling capability and service that we do principally for the airlines. And so being able to understand and predict fatigue and fatigue cycles is really important. So we build a fairly simple application in conjunction with Boeing. And Boeing is a, is a leader in fatigue studies in the cockpit. Um, and we put that on the iPhone. Uh, and a week after we introduced it, Two pilots from a very large uh, major international airline walked into their dispatch office and said, I can't fly today. <laughs> and of course, the airline called us up and said, what are you doing? But the technology allows us, the changes and the innovation that's coming allows us to continue to bring safety and efficiency to the industry. We have to use it in the right way. And when you look at what's happening, so in my opening remarks I said, the world depends upon this robust air transportation system that we're all a part of. It's continuing to grow. The middle class in China, the middle class in India, middle class around the world is growing and the demand for airplanes is going to continue to grow. And when you look at these Boeing's numbers, a fleet going from 18,800 airplanes to 35,000, 36,000. And you saw in the video the need for pilots. 
you know, we're in an industry that needs to bring the right kind of technology so that we can bring the capability and the lift that the world needs. One of the most monumental changes that we're all going to experience and be a part of over the next several years is next gen. The challenge to bring next gen into reality is, is monumental. Uh, and it's a partnership between the FAA and industry, a wonderful partnership. And we've seen with what we just accomplished with Executive Jet and the iPad that the FAA is looking at industry um, and the adoption of technology in a lot different set of lenses than before. We have to work together to bring this into our industry because of the, the growth in traffic and the need that, uh, that I've talked about. So the way ahead is, again, the theme of this convention is around innovation, is you've got to embrace change. It's happening uh, at, a, at a pace that uh, is unparalleled, as, as I said, in human history, and we can be a part of it. Our industry has to embrace change. Um, and we have to innovate in the right ways that continue to drive the safety that is the fundamental foundation of, of who we are and what we do in this industry, at the same time driving efficiency uh, going forward. And I like this uh, quote. You know, that we need to be the parents of the future and not the offsprings of our past. Thank you for being here. For, for those of you that raised your hand who are Jeppesen customers, thank you for uh, putting the money in our pockets. For those of you who didn't raise your hand, uh, come see me. The booth is over. Uh, <laughs> have a wonderful convention, and thank you very much.